mosquito. We're, see, it's, it's right in that moment that we have to know that it, it, our, our physical senses, uh, it, it isn't dependent on our physical senses <coughs> about what I feel like. It's what I know. This promise says, amen. Glory be to God. And we have to hang on that with all our hearts. Amen. Or we won't be healed. Or, or we won't receive our peace. Or we won't receive anything from God. This flesh and blood has nothing to do with me receiving from God. Amen. Hallelujah. Satan proposed a lie denying the judgment of death for a deliberate transgression. A lot of oh, you won't die. You can go ahead and, and disobey what God said. God just really doesn't want you to, to, to have more wisdom and understanding. You won't really die. God really doesn't mean what he says. See? Matthew Henry says, Satan teaches men first to doubt and then to deny. Amen. Genesis 3 and 5 says, You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And you face Eve's thing that she can improve herself by eating and disobeying. How does that apply to us nowadays? <coughs> I can think of one way. You know, you'll get into your mind, and you know, you really, you really can't afford to die. That back in, in your own bank account and you save it for a rainy day. You know, if you give it, you're not going to have it. Yeah. How many people buy into that? Yeah. And so, people buy into that and do it. And then all the time, they eat it for themselves and they're eating their seed. Because if you're not sowing, you're not reaping it. Amen. <laughs> See how slip the devil is? You shall be as God, knowing good and evil. They, they were totally innocent. They had no conception of what evil was. I don't know if they even pondered the issue. They, they just had provision and peace and happy fellowship with God and bliss. Amen. So, Matthew Henry says, he prepared to them that they could have intellectual delights and satisfaction. Your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Your, your eyes shall be opened. See, this is the way he does God's people. He tries to make you feel like that you're missing out on something. That's really why Christians go back into the bars and go back into the for entertainment. Oh, this Christian life is just kind of boring. You know, I need something to do. I need I need a church with with uh, um, <coughs> has not only the need but has the side dishes too. <coughs> oh, really? I didn't know God was in the side dishes that long. Your eyes shall be open. I look up that word open and in the Hebrew it means the senses, especially the eyes. They figure to figuratively to be observed. And he goes on and it says that the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and, and the tree to be desired to make one wise. She took the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Where are you, Adam? Adam, where are you? Not, not what place in the garden, but what, what condition did your heart in? Adam, where are you? See, he says that he would say that to us. <coughs> hey, when we fall, when you give in and don't obey. Hey, Richard, where are you? Hello, lots of you. No, where are you? In other words, he calls, he's calling for a self-examination of, of, of what we just did. Adam, where are you, man? What's happened to you? So, 
So I, they partook of the tree. You know, now this, you can just take this and chew on it. All right, I, I, I was, last week I was going to the vine. And I was thinking about this tree. You know? And then it just popped into my head. You know, I just, I just had this knowing that, and, and, and I'm bleeding. I kind of, I, I kind of lean towards the way that that about this tree that this this is the way it is. I, I, I mean, I'm not trying to read into the word, but this tree. I thought about what 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 was it? The tree itself and the fruit of it had any properties in it that really could release the knowledge of good or evil, or was it in? Or was it in? Could it be it was in the act of obeying or disobeying where the knowledge was? You know? I, I'm inclined to think that that's the way it is. Because I, I, because a, a good rule of thumb is to always go back to the original language. You, you people who like to study, and, and you get a thought, search it out in, in the Hebrew and the Greek. Okay, now that word tree, you know what that thing meant? You know what that means? And I search the root words to it. It just means a tree. It means wood. Nothing, nothing special like it's descriptive of any other tree, like in the garden, like out here. This means wood. So yes, I'm inclined to think that, that the thing about that tree, it was just God putting a test on, a moral test. <laughs> now, okay, you can eat, and, and you can eat of any tree in this garden, except this one. Because I said it. Amen. I said, you know. So, you know what it's like when, when you, you take a little child and you can tell them you can have, you can have this, and this, and this, and this, but I don't want you to touch that. <laughs> Why, God? The, the very thing that they're not supposed to touch is the thing that they're going to want the most. Amen. <laughs> and that's, our, that, that, that's our human nature. I think that it was just a test. And, and, and the, 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 the blessing and the curse, the prosperity and the poverty was in the obeying or the disobeying. That's what I think. You can take that and just chew on that. Yeah, it could have been. It could have been okay. Don't don't drink from this end of the river. Yeah. Drink over here from this one. Yeah. Is that what would have come? Oh, did he really mean what he said? You know, there's nothing wrong with drinking from this end of the river. There's nothing wrong with keeping your ties tied this way. You know your little shorts gonna cut you short. God will understand. You know. Loves you. You know. Wrong. I mean, he loves his kids. Like, I'm telling you, closing up on the giving is the worst thing that you can do. You know? I'm telling you for your benefit. You know? and, and, and I'm not after your money. <laughs> I'm not like, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it's in your best interest to obey God here and here. So, what I'm just going to mean is. And their eyes were opened. You know what happened? They just obeyed and the curse came in. And, and for the first time ever, mankind felt the weight and the death of sin. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Jesus experienced that on the cross. Yeah. The second Adam. That's why he's called the second Adam. He, he was the first. Adam was the first man. Jesus was the, the second the second Adam, the first born again man. And Jesus hung on that cross for us and took the weight of our sin. He said, my God, my God, why have you accepted me? So, in closing, the issue is not about prosperity and money. The issue is not whether we can live without monetary gain or abundance. But really, I think the real question is, can can we live? Can we live with it? <laughs> if we have it, can we live with it without it destroying it? Amen. Now,
Matthew 6 and 33 says that he promises to meet all our needs. And, but he says with that, but you've got to seek first my kingdom and my, and my righteousness. And everything you need, my child, is yours. When you need it, at the moment you need it. In fact, it's best for next week. Right in that moment, your faith will be tested and I'll meet your need. Yeah, that's a lot to think about, isn't it? So I know this has been different this morning. But yeah, I'm to do that again. Hallelujah. Does anybody need prayer? For anything to do with in prayer? Come on up, please. Yeah, yeah. Anybody? Huh? Everybody good? Nobody's running up here? I'm assuming you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, Brother Rusty.